Well, thank you. What a blessing. We have gathered together to continue in the book of Acts. We took a break last week because it was Easter. Hope you guys had a great Easter. I sure did. It was good seeing everyone here. and uh, I didn't eat anything special, but I don't need any more food. <laughs> oh... Today we're studying, Paul is on his travels, and uh, if you've got to remember as we're in the book of Acts, he's on his missionary journeys, and he's traveling by boat, and he's going from seaport to seaport, and while he's on his way, one of those cities is in, what is today, Turkey, the, the Treo, Treos, um, which is where he's at, and he's probably speaking to these people while he's waiting for his ship to leave because his till the next port of call and um, he says he he met on the first day of the week where Christians gathered together to break bread because it's not a church service we don't have some kind of food and to give instructions and regard in Christians life about worship and you know, on the first day of the week This is actually a significant moment for what will be today's church because this is the first clear evidence of Christians meeting on the first day of the month, which will translate through over the passage of time into Sunday. One of the reasons we meet on the Lord's Day, the day He rose from the grave, that we found the empty tomb, and one of the tradition comes from this day, this moment. Now, this would not have looked like it does today. They weren't gathering on Sunday morning. Actually, it was very well could have been Saturday night. Or if he was speaking to the Greek audience, it could have been uh, uh, Sunday night, depending on who you listen to and commentators. But it was the first day of the week. Um, So if he's speaking to the Greek, using the Greek terminology, it would have been um, Sunday night. If he's following the Jewish terminology, it would have been Saturday night. So keep that in mind, that we don't know. (laughs) It was the first day of the week. And um, so they gathered together on the first day of the week, and and, uh, Paul keeps speaking until midnight. And some of you think that I'm too long-winded. Um, but we've got to remember that in a time with no TV, no radios, no podcasts, no YouTube, TikTok, and even the printed word was rare. They didn't have printing presses, so it was all handwritten. Those who were earnest about the Word of God, they were hungry to be fed. To hear, to ask questions, to to say, what about this? What about that? What is Jesus teaching on this? Uh, When's the last time you were that hungry? Have you thought about it? You were that hungry. That you were like, oh, it's okay if we stay up till midnight. I mean, some of us are like, midnight? I can't make it past nine. They were up till midnight asking questions, engaged, because they were that hungry about Christ. When's the last time that you were that hungry? And some of that's because we're saturated with things that we can. If you want to hear a sermon, just turn on your TV. We're saturated. We have the, if you want to hear a Bible, you want to read the Bible, go read the Bible. It's the number one selling book in America. How many of you guys have multiple versions on your shelf, right? Yeah, I have more than I can count. And we have, so some of it's because we've got oversaturated, but, but some of it's just because we lose that, that zeal for Christ. I remember speaking to a missionary who was in China, and he said that, you know, he came there. When he first got there, he came there to speak at this person's house, and um, he prepared the sermon 
that he was used to in the United States, he was a 40 minuter. So 40 minutes, that was his, his sermon, 40 minutes. They were so hungry there in this church that was illegal that they could have been arrested for meeting at. They were so hungry, they ended up meeting there for over two days, taking a break to sleep and to go to the bathroom and eat. They were that hungry because they just kept asking questions. They just kept, they were that curious, what's, the, what's, what about this? What about this? Explain this passage to me. What about this hard topic? When's the last time you felt that zeal? I think some, so often a lot of us, we become complacent. We lose that, that zeal for that. We lose that hunger for the Word. And as we continue on with the passage, it doesn't end with just a long sermon. They, they gather together and, they're, and, and one of the seminary jokes was this is the dangers of pre- preaching too long. Um, a boy who is probably between 8 and 14 is up in the third sword window listening to the, the, the sermon. Now he's way past his bedtime. And um, there, it says that there were lots of lamps in the upper room, which means there's probably a lot of lack of oxygen as well in that upper room. And he's getting sleepy because he may have been bored. But it's also because of the lack of oxygen in the room and the flickering lights. And you know, that's why the hypnotists use flickering lights a lot. It's because they'll put you in a relaxed state. And so this boy is in there. He's, he's become in this relaxed state. And he falls asleep in the window. And it says it's not like when he drifts off. It's like he falls to a deep sleep. And he rolls out the window and he dies. I want to talk about a showstopper right there. Death, that's one of those things that church is over. We've got something most we've got to take care of. Not Paul. He rushes over and hugs this boy. He says, don't worry, he, there's life still in him. And do they say, okay, well, let's go to bed. Let's pick it up tomorrow. No. What does it say they do? They continue on until dawn. Knowing they've got work the next day. Knowing this boy has fallen out of the window and died. They still are that hungry for the Word of God. Wow. Lord, make me that hungry. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul panteth after you. That's hunger for thirst for the Lord. Wow. I remember the first time I read that, and I preached on it in a church, and people were leaving at noon because they they weren't going to make it to the lunch line in time. How spoiled have we become? It's important. And I think about this. It's important that we eat the Word of God, that we hunger and thirst for it so much that we're willing to do what it takes to become after Him. But it's not just about a bunch of rules. Is that right? It's not about, hey, you've got to read your Bible. How many of you guys, that's where your Bible study, that's why you're not hungry for it, because it's become that checklist that you've got to, did I read my Bible today? Check. And then I got that, did I do all 15, well, it was 14 minutes, 12, okay, let's finish. If I did five minutes, that's good, check it off. We're not hungry for it, because it's, one of the reasons we're not hungry for it is because it's become a, a, a rule that you have to follow. This wasn't about following a rule for them. They were just hungry for it. They wanted it. 
Because God didn't come to bring such things as rules and regulation. He came to bring what? Life. Life, a full life. And part of that full life is we're going to desire that what sustains us, which is the Word of God. But it's only through death do we get that life. It's only through death that we get that life. Just like that little boy, he's going to die and relive. But Jesus Christ is the one who died for us so that we can have new life. And I'm not just talking about eternal life, you know, that mystical thing. We, you know, Do you know where you're going when you die? Well, I hope you do. But it's not necessarily just about that. It's about the life you're living now. If we just make it about that, then there, then we can put it off till that, then there. It's about now. What is the life I'm living now? Is it full of the life of Jesus Christ? But we have to die first. We have to die too. Just like this boy, we have to die. Luke um, 9, 23 uh, and through 24 says, And he said to them, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life on account of me, this person will save it. Pick up your cross. That sounds like, you know, we're not talking about picking up your bag from the airport. Pick up your cross. Pick up the instrument of death. Die to yourself daily. And if you lose your life, you will gain his life. We have to die to ourselves. We have to die we have to die to the slavery of ourselves. We have to die to, 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 to the worldliness so that we can be raised in righteousness. And as we are raised in righteousness, I mean, isn't that what baptism represents? Dying to self and being raised anew. And as we die to, our righteous, to, to be raised in righteousness, then we have a new life that craves and and hungers after the word of god what an amazing gift death to sell brings life in jesus christ and a life that isn't just you by yourself it's a life that's part of a family praise god we're not alone right we're part of a family that expands further than laughlin further than Nevada, further than the United States, further than any one country, we're part of a family that's everywhere. You've got brothers and sisters in Uganda that you've never met yet. You've got brothers and sisters in Taiwan that you haven't had the chance to meet yet. You've got brothers and sisters in Cote d'Ivoire that you haven't had the chance to meet yet. You've got brothers and sisters in Ireland that you haven't had the chance to meet yet. What an amazing blessing that is to be raised where you were by yourself locked to who you were here in this world, to be raised to a family, adopted into a family that is so much bigger and so much more than you could ever imagine. Being part of a family, being part of a, a life that 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 puts to death that that hopelessness. Is that ever struggle you're going to struggle with? Life is not perfect. God never promises that it's going to be easy. Never promises that you're not going to struggle. But He does say that the, one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. doesn't mean happiness it means joy you don't have that hopelessness but before we can have life we must die to ourselves we must humble ourselves before god he is king 
You can't do it on your own. We have to accept that He is God and will be God and will always be God and that we need Him and He died for us. We have to let Jesus forgive us and trust that He can forgive you and change you. Not just then, but now. And each day we live in the knowledge that we're in a new life. Not just then, but now. So when we weep, we weep in our new life. When we smile, we smile in a new life. When we struggle, we struggle in our new life. When we rest, we rest in our new life. When we, we, we forgive, we forgive in our new life. When we struggle with forgiveness, that's trying to hold on to our old life. Life isn't easy. But it's a life that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And as we are filled with this new life, we hunger and we thirst after God. I tell you what, that's what I want. To be so filled with the hunger of God. Father God, I praise you today, Lord. Lord, I ask that you fill me, fill us, fill this congregation, fill this church with the hunger for you. Lord, that short minutes aren't enough, but we want to be in your presence, discussing with one another, taking the time for study, taking the time to be in your word, taking the time to to ask the hard questions, wrestling, meditating on things. Lord, we know that sometimes your word goes down like milk, smooth, and sometimes it's chewy and we have to wrestle with it. Lord, I pray for us in both instances that we just hunger and thirst for you. Lord, that we are engulfed in your word, that we may not Be focused. On all the things that lead down the path of death. But on life. We know that you bring life. As we focus on you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. We're going to go to a time of invitation.